So I'm going to use these for jelly printing or gel printing. And this is an image of a clip art that I got from the internet, plain black and white image that I printed out onto cardstock. And I'm going to cut that out and use it as a mask. I'm using a really sharp X-Acto knife. Make sure you change your blades frequently. Every time you start a new project, you should be using a new blade. This is gonna take a while. I might not want to follow it exactly. It's just a general guideline. So you can alter this any way you want. I'm gonna make it a little smoother so I don't have to pick up all the little jaggedy bits that are hard to cut out. I can already tell my knife is not sharp enough because nothing's happening, so I'm gonna change my blade. easier just to cut a big line around the tree and then go back in and choose which areas you want more detail. Many hours later, just kidding. That took about a half hour. Uh, if you're not sure what you're seeing, sometimes it's helpful to turn it over to the white side. And that way you're not confused by the black, but also now you really see the silhouette. So as you can see, I didn't follow it exactly. You don't need to get every little last bit. And I kind of like the chunky hand cut look of this. So, we will see how this holds up for gel printing. I'm a little bit concerned about how fragile the small pieces are at the top, but we will see how that works. I might coat this with some gel medium first before using it, and that will strengthen it. Well, I don't have gel medium, so I'm gonna try painting it with just a light coat of white acrylic. But I'm going to spread it pretty thin with my craft brush and hopefully that will give it a little more strength. Now I don't want to paint it to my scrap paper here, so after you've painted it a little bit, let it dry on something else, like something raised. It's curving up a little bit, but that'll be okay. 
Okay, so here we are with some silver acrylic and we can test out our mask that we made. And I'm just having fun here making textures using some ordinary household mesh. And we will use our mask here and see what happens. I'm using an old print that was kind of a light blue. I figure sometimes I'll practice on old prints because I've got a background ready. So I'm just seeing how this silver shows up on the blue. It's kind of nice. It's subtle. It's not really a finished thing, but I'm trying here a darker blue. And uh, there I'm trying printing with uh, a piece of crystal, some other household objects, cookie cutters, and seeing if I can add a little texture to the background and then bringing back our mask again. And I'm printing on that light colored print to see what happens. Okay, so it's nice. You've got different layers there and some texture in the background. Might want to add a little more to that. Okay, here I'm trying another one. This is a different print. I'm trying various experiments. I made a dark blue print and I wanted to see, could I get some white back into it? So I'm actually trying to transfer some lighter color by applying the paint to the mask. You can roll paint onto your mask. Uh, it's working a little bit, but it was drying too fast. So I've added some medium or retarder to the paint. You can't see that it's off screen, off camera, but that's what I'm trying to do here. Just transfer some more white. And you'll notice I'm actually printing, doing this on top of the gel plate because there's something about the sponginess of the plate underneath the paper that even if you're not printing directly off of the plate, um, seems to help things print. Okay, so here I am. I've tried to add a little bit of white directly to the print. And now I'm switching to adding some final details with some stamps. So these are just commercial stamps you can get at Michael's or other places on the internet. And I'm using some white acrylic, which I rolled onto the stamp. There you are. You can see that in the corner there. And I'm using a paper to transfer just so I don't move the stamp too much with my hand. I'm just trying it out on different locations. That's kind of interesting because then the trees sort of fade back and the snowflakes come forward. Kind of soft and loose look there. Okay, that's nice. And then oh, I'm trying some silver stamp pad. So using those same stamps, I'm now switching to a silver kind of mixing the white and the silver. Not sure how visible that is, but in real life, you'll see a difference between the white and the silver. So that's kind of nice, gives it a little different dimension. So going back to the early print there, uh, the blue, blue greenish one, um, now I decided to use just silver from the stamp pad and add some more kind of details. That's turning out pretty well. 